Hello, Internet. It's me, Greg, and I'm back with more color magic. Now, in my last video that you can watch right here, I shared a fun color experiment that was designed to help you create color palettes of your own entirely from scratch. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to use them. Welcome to how to use color palettes and be pretty good at it most of the time, the video. In the right hands, a color palette will unite disparate elements and direct the viewer's eye. But in the wrong ones, it just might send them into a violent and uncontrollable rage. Let's look at this landing page as an example. If you are both angered and confused, then I've done my job. There's so much color going on, it makes it very difficult to focus, let alone understand what you're supposed to do. And for a website, that's a problem. I close that tab in less than three seconds and then go rage tweet about it into the empty void of the internet. But what if I told you that with a little work, we could transform this page and these colors into something of value, perhaps even make them pleasing to the eye. The reason color is so difficult to use is because it's all about context. And more color doesn't always mean better color. My point is, before we go nuts, let's understand how to use all the colors from our palette. Um, great, but how do we do that, Greg? I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about the 60-30-10 rule. Think of it as a recipe for how much of each color you should use. So your primary you want to use 60% of the time, your secondary 30%, and your accent color only 10%. Like most areas of design, there are well-established rules to help guide your decision making. This isn't a hard and fast rule, but it's a good place to start. Do you like examples? I like examples. So here's another one. This poster was designed by my good friend Paul Rand. Okay, fine, we were not friends, but look him up because he's dope and you'll probably recognize his work. He's got yellow, green, red, blue, and a couple of neutrals all working together. And that's a lot of color. So then how and why do they all work so well together? Well, let's take a look at how much of each color he's using. I'd say this is 60% white, 25% yellow, 10% red and green, and maybe 5% blue and black. Looking at the colors this way makes a lot more sense because we can clearly see how sparingly Mr. Rand used each of the colors. So then how do we apply that to our crazy looking landing page? Well, maybe we should start by making our own color ratio. Here we have the color palette for our mm, work in progress landing page. Now the first step is to figure out what do we want our primary, secondary, and accent colors to be. In this case, I'm just gonna go left to right. I'm gonna group some of these colors together too. So. Um, because we're using three very, very vibrant colors. And yeah, as we can already tell, using them all together in big blocks doesn't exactly work well. Bonus points if you know what color harmony this is. I'm gonna start by taking these neutrals here and grouping them together. And these are going to serve as our, our primary set of colors. We'll have blue be the secondary. And then I'm going to group together this pink and golden yellow and reserve these for accents. Okay, let's let's make our own kind of visual color layout here. So I'm gonna grab a primary, copy this down. It just so happens that I made this 1000 pixels wide. Not a coincidence. That's because it'll be a lot easier to set up a sort of visual ratio with a, with a round number like that. So if we want our primary colors to be 60%, we just need to grab this group and then change its width to 600 because that's 60% of 1,000. And we want this one to be 30%. So we'll change the width to 300. Lastly, we want the yellow and pink to be the last level 10%. And that would make them a cool 100 pixels. Great. So on top, we have the color palette itself. And down below, we've got our ratio for how to use each color. And more importantly, how much of each color we're going to use in our layout. Now what? Before we rework our page, there's one more exercise I like to do to help me understand what colors work best together and also create some rules for me to play by. Real quick, I like rules because they help me make the big decisions up front and less dumb little ones later. What we're going to do now is figure out what colors work together. And I like to do that by basing it off the background color. Now, the reason I have these four quadrants of color is because we have our primary, which are these three neutrals, and our secondary blue. So when we're approaching our layout, chances are we're gonna have one of these four be our background color because in our ratio, we're going to see them the most. I like to start just by placing some type in the layouts here because when you're using typography, you need to think about a couple of additional things 
The main one is legibility. And let's sort of just figure out big copy color. Okay, so legibility wise, these two are solid. Uh, this one, not so much. We have uh, a couple options here. Now, we could go with the ivory, just sort of invert this, or the more cream color. I think either of those would work. Blue is on the table as uh, our secondary color. You know, I can read it, but depending on someone's vision or the brightness and darkness of their screen, this, this might be difficult for some people to read. So I would opt for something more legible. I'm gonna keep it really simple and just go with the, the ivory for both of these. Now, the other thing to consider is maybe we have a, a text link that we need. And then also, if we think of these as, as links, that sort of opens up the color usage scenario a little bit. All right, we know this type color over this background works well, it's clear, we can read it, great. Now, if it's a link, it's a call to action, so we could use an accent color because that's kind of what we're reserving these for. Over white, I like I liked the pink, I think that works really well. We try yellow, but that's a bit hard to read, so let's go with the pink there. Over this cream background, yeah, for the sake of legibility, I think pink works best. Um, over black, you know, yellow could work, pink could work. So I, I think either of those are on the table. And then over the blue, pink's tough. That's that's a really hard read. I, I don't know that that would work. I'm not sure yellow would work either. It's better. Let's go with that. I, I think either y yellow or, or white. And it depends on the usage. If it's like text that's sort of in line in a paragraph, you know, you might you might just be fine using white white type with like an underline or something. But Whatever, let's sort of use that as our basis. Now, the other thing we can do is, let's say we, we have a button. We wanna draw people's eye to that. So what we don't wanna do is make it one of our primary colors. We're gonna see it being used everywhere else and we're not gonna know that it means something special. A button, I think, is a great opportunity to use an accent color. Pink would definitely work, and I think yellow would work too. Either one would, would work over this background. Uh, let's see what we got over here. The yellow uh, kind of gets a little dull with this background because they're both kind of warm. I think pink is the way to go. Down here, yep, pink or yellow seems to work. And what's interesting is like the yellow becomes so much more bright and vibrant. Like it, it works really well, just as well as the pink in fact. Uh, and over here, yeah, this is tricky. This blue is super vibrant. I think the, the pink and the blue kind of vibrate off each other. They, they, they're kind of like fighting for my attention. So I don't think pink is the best choice there. Yellow is better. It doesn't kind of vibrate as much, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Basically, we're going for contrast. We wanna grab someone's attention. So I think either of these might work. Cool, all right. So, you know, now we may have some little like design elements, I'll call them, just that we sort of, you know, use for decoration around things. And this is where we have to be mindful of our ratio because if we start making these pink and yellow, it's like that sort of devalues our, our use of them as accents because, well, they become overused. And if we look at our ratio, we can see if we, we sort of look at this layout, like only a very small percentage of this should be either yellow or pink. And we've already reserved those for these sort of calls to action. So we wanna stick with our, our other kind of like neutrals and maybe even our, our secondary color. Yeah, yeah, so this looks good overall. And then I think, you know, if we, if we had to, if we really, really had to, we could always add like a little, a really small design design element here that's yellow because as long as it's not taking up a really big space, then I think it's, it's okay. And you'll notice I'm trying to keep the yellow away from the blue. So it sort of blends in a little more with the background. So if I'm looking at all these, I feel pretty good about it. Um, I think we have a nice sort of set of color rules for each background. We seem to be obeying our, our sort of ratio of color usage. We have cool little accents that are, don't overpower the main call to action. I think we're in good shape here. Fantastic. We prioritize our colors. We know which ones go well together while keeping our color ratio intact. I think it's time we take another shot at that landing page. We've got our work cut out for us, but fortunately we are smart and we made these wonderful color pairings that we know work. And I'm gonna use these as guides to sort of figure out what I want the background color of each of these sections to be. I'm gonna take the menu first, I think, and just sort of make it kind of, kind of neutral. That's fine. Okay, we know pink is an accent color, so we're not gonna use that as a background. Let's just sort of mimic what we did over here. So we'll change this to that. Okay, the type is black, I like that, that's good. 
This is our button, our sort of call to action here. So I'm gonna make this pink. Yeah, I think white white text is uh, where we, what we wanna do with this button. There's a lot to consider with this, with the illustration because these colors are all over the place and we're starting to sort of like lose some clarity here. But let's come back to that. Let's, let's sort of just break down each section at a time. Uh, this type is hard to read over the blue. Let's go back to our color pairings. I'm just gonna use this one because it's right here and I like it. And we'll sort of put these experiments to the test, right? This is more decorative. It's not really a call to action. So I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change this to blue. Yep. And then our call to action is really, it's really this right, right here. And we know in this case, if we have a link or call to action, it should be pink. Okay, cool. So down here, ready to start snacking. Yes, I am. So this is like the big call to actions. We want a lot of contrast. We want people to like, uh, look at that button. I think this black background would be the way to go. We need to work on this illustration a little bit, but let's sort of like resist the urge to go into detail and just take a step back and look at it as a whole. The one thing I might consider changing is, is the menu bar up here because black is against white, especially it's so high contrast, it might be kind of overbearing. So I'm gonna go with our secondary color and make this blue. This is a really good start. So far, so good. Now let's tackle those pesky illustrations. I think in this case, you know, what we what we want to do is just sort of simplify the amount of colors that we're using and, and really, really sort of pay more attention to our ratio here. Because we have a, a kind of bright pink button as our call to action, I would go so far as to say is we shouldn't use pink in, in the illustration at all. Let's really try to simplify it to maybe just our primary and secondary colors. So like these neutrals in the blue and then where and if needed, a little kind of touch of yellow peppered throughout. So. I'm gonna start just by kind of going through and, and cleaning up the colors and just starting to simplify things. Already that looks a lot better. And you know what, I like the, this little touch of yellow. We can probably add it a few other places in here. As long as we don't overdo it, it it'll actually be a nice, uh, a nice little accent. That looks pretty good to me. It works well with everything, so it's, it stays within our, our kind of our ratio. All right, good work up here. Let's do the same thing with our little cupcake. Not bad. There's a good balance of color, a clear visual hierarchy. I mean, hey, it's a whole lot better than this stinker. It seems like a good time for the recap part of the video. <laughs> color is so difficult to use is because it's all about context. That's true, me. Color is all about context. And to use it to your advantage, you need to have a purpose for each color in your palette. 60, 30, 10, primary, secondary, accent. If you develop your own color ratio and set of rules for how to use them, then your palette will work just about anywhere. And speaking of things that rule, did you know that I teach a course about color? It's true, I totally do. And you should totally take it. We'll talk about color theory, how to build color palettes using reference, and we'll demystify all this crazy color magic we keep talking about. Visit thefuture.com slash color to learn more about it. And in the meantime, like, sub, hit the thingy, do that other stuff, but don't forget to wash your hands. Later. That's a wrap.